What are you thinking? I'm a long way from home. It's the start of a new beginning. It's meant to be slightly daunting. Yeah. Come on. Come on. You'll be fine. I'm just gonna go to the bathroom. You don't mind, do you? Exciting, isn't it? It's not a better city. Should have brought your matches from home. What? Carry it up those stairs? <sighs> All sorts have probably happened on this. I'll bring yours up when I visit next. You can't do that. You know that you can't. Mum would think that I'm never coming home. Then I'll help you buy a new one. Honestly, it, it doesn't matter. This isn't forever. No, but you need to be comfortable. A mattress won't make me comfortable. All right, whatever you say. Look, just try to take mum out of your head. This is your life now. You've got to make this your home, however you deem necessary. All right, come on. I don't have long, let's get unpacked. My room back home was bigger than this, and the price of our whole house was cheaper. What does it matter? The government's paying for it. You'd be lucky to ever pay the money back. So, you're already doubting me. I didn't mean it like that. I just meant that things are changing so fast. Who knows what will happen? That's true, I guess. Look, 
You don't have to help me unpack. Why don't we go and have lunch or something? I promised Mum that I'd help. So? I have a week to unpack. Let's do something. See? It's already starting to come to life. You don't have to always do what Mum says, you know. It's not like that. It's just that I don't have time. A walk, then? What don't you understand about I don't have time? You have time to unpack all my belongings and decorate my room. I have time for what I've been asked to do. But you've done all of this before. If you show me the book. Mum asked me to help you get unpacked and that's what I'm going to do. It's weird. I, um... I didn't think it would feel like this. Like what? Like I'm staying at some budget hotel and the housekeeper won't stop tidying up. The quicker things are in place, the quicker it's home. Would you stop saying that? What? Home. Look, I know you're worried, but I don't have time for this. I've got to get back to work this afternoon and check in on Mum when she I wish finishes. You just leave that job. Well, maybe she will now that we're both out of the house. Putting a roof over our head was more important. But she had dreams. What happened to her? She had us. Can you just stop unpacking? You have no idea where I'm going to want to put any of it. Well, you don't have much option. On the desk, in the wardrobe, under the bed. Please. All right, fine. Thank you. Have me for about another 45 minutes. I'd make the most of it if I were you. What are you thinking? I don't know. This and that. Is there really a point to any of this? Of course there is. There's a point to everything. Yeah, but whilst you're young, everyone encourages you to chase your dreams, but when you're older, I know that'll change. Where are you getting ideas like this from? A long line of people. I just... I feel like I'm always following someone. Then don't follow. Make your own path, like I tell you to, time and time again. And like Mum told you, and her parents, her, and so on. Mum couldn't chase her dreams because she had to raise us. She gave up her dreams for ours. I hate that. But don't start acting like you know anything about life. You've only just become an adult. But who's to say that we were worth it? We were worth it. It may feel that way to you, but the weight is off your shoulders. What on earth are you talking about now? You don't feel the weight of it anymore because the pressure has been moved on to me. Well, no one forced you to come here. But what real choice did I have? My choices were always predetermined. You and Mum both knew that I never wanted to come to university. Everyone who has the chance to come to university should. But that's not it, is it? Why couldn't you just be honest with me? Admit that things didn't go your way. Why should I? Things don't go the way you plan them. Your path alters, your, your aspirations change. Then why are both of your paths attempting to go through me? <laughs> you won't talk to me about it because a part of you knows that it's true. Isn't it? Look, 
what I'm trying to say is that it's overwhelming. Why are you being so ungrateful? I'm not ungrateful. Really? Because there are thousands of young people outside that window that never get the chance. There are kids that want to be astronauts who are shot down before they can even try. Teenagers that want to go into fashion but are pushed into accountancy. And people that aren't allowed to study art just because it may not offer them a career. Forget that I said anything. There's nothing to forget that I don't really know. Look, I get what you're saying. I do. With the way Mum's tried to support us over the years, it's, it's been tough. You know, she's pleaded that one of us make a fortune to save her from a life of work. But her intentions aren't as black and white as they seem. It's not a case that we, we have to die trying, it's just that we should try. But time's the way you felt by two, along with the fact that I've always lived in your shadow. The problem is that Mum's always babied oh, That's easy for you to say. Why is everything a competition? Because I'm the one in second place. We're a family, a, a team. No one's against each other. And that's what scares me. If we're a team, then what's to stop me from following you down the same path? Neither me nor Mum would let that happen. See, there it is. You're forcing me to not only achieve my dreams, but to make you feel like you've achieved yours. It's not like that. Do you have any idea of the pressure that this is causing me? The pressure that I'm under to even be here in the first place? Look, you tried hard. You applied early, you put in the work, and you got accepted into one of the most prestigious acting schools in the country. That's not because of me. That's not because of Mum. That's because of you. What if I don't want to act anymore? Well, don't be ridiculous. Of course you want to act. Do I? Chekhov, Death of England, Fairview, do, do these look like the possessions of someone that doesn't want to act? But you won't even consider it as a possibility though, will you? Because you know that if I've given up then I've made us the failures that everyone always thought we were. Do you remember when you were in school and your science teacher, Mr. Ayer, that was his name, right? Well, do you remember when he failed your science grade? And he said that it'd be impossible to become an actor without science. Mum had never been so angry at someone in her life. She asked how science even related to acting in the first place. And do you remember what he said? He said you needed science because, because you'd never be an actor. He said you'd never be an actor. I know what he said. Then you remember how you felt? You came home in tears. It wasn't like that. Well, what was it like then? I was upset because she stormed out of parents' evening, drew all the attention towards us, and then the way that she cried as she drove us home. I could feel how much my dreams meant to her. I suddenly felt this metric ton of pressure. It seemed like she was more upset for herself than for me. Why are you lying? You weren't even in the car with us. How can you talk as if you know what happened? Because I saw you when you got home. And Mum told me what happened. But you didn't see her crying though, did you? I can't remember. Why lie? You know that you didn't. We sat in the car on the drive for 30 minutes before coming inside. She said she had to look okay in front of you because you had some girl over. It wasn't just some girl. It was then. The truth is, I really liked science. I enjoyed learning about it, but Mum told me I didn't need it to achieve my dreams. Well, was she wrong? Well, when have you ever used science? Never. Because of that, I flunked my grades. Well, what does it matter? Look where you are now. I know, but from that moment on, I threw everything I had at acting and started chasing what many people would say is an impossible dream. I never knew any of this. 
I never knew any of it until I was older. Well, then you've already started to grow up at a faster rate than I did. What are you talking about? You've already graduated, got married, got a decent job. Yeah, but none of that was easy. Not only have I been influenced by mum, but every decision I've had to make since getting married has had my wife in the equation. That was where you went wrong. <laughs> what would you know about it? I'm just saying, growing up, I thought that I had to be in a serious relationship by the time I was 14 and to be married by the time I was 21. But things don't work out that way. And decide what you want with your life. I just want to find my own path. Then you'll be fine here, as long as you start to live an honest life. What do you mean by that? You know what I mean. Then stop cowering from what you actually want to say. Just spit it out. I'm not cowering from anything. I'm just trying to say that all you need to do is make the most of your time here and just accept that things might change along the way. I know that. Really? Because a part of me thinks that you don't. That you came here to get away from the stress at home, hoping that will help you come to terms with how you feel. And I respect that bravery. I found it hard enough to come to university and I didn't have the worries that you have. Stop talking as if you can relate to how I feel. We are nothing alike. We're more alike than you realise. And just because I'm your brother and I have to care, doesn't mean that I don't want to. Just talk to me. What good will any more talking do? More good than it's done so far. Please, just stop. Look, I, I appreciate what you're trying to do, but you need to stop acting as if you understand me. Then show me. It's not as easy as that. I know. But I'd feel much better if you'd at least taken the first step. Who do you really care about here? Me or you? You know I didn't mean it like that. But I'm not going to lie. It'd be much easier if you'd just cut the... Just save it. I don't think we should take this any further. I don't like that you're treating me like the enemy. Just because I'm your brother and I can't naturally relate doesn't mean that I haven't felt this way before. I find that hard to believe. Why? Just because I've seemed to navigate through life doesn't mean that I haven't had my own problems. And just because I've been in a long-term relationship doesn't mean that I haven't struggled with who I am. Then you shouldn't be putting so much pressure onto me. I'm not trying to. I'm just hoping that with me being a little bit more honest, it might encourage you to do the same. What you've done is state what's obvious. Then why are you not accepting that? Regardless, if it's obvious, the truth is still worth something. Do you remember when I told mum that I was engaged? She laughed. It's the kind of laugh that rips you to pieces. I knew it was going to take her by surprise. But we were both 18. Old enough to take responsibility for our actions. Where are you going with this? Right now, I'm just trying to tell a story. Well, you know how I got. I questioned her reaction. She knew she'd done wrong, but she was unable to admit it. That's always been a problem, though, hasn't it? Yeah. But I was hoping it wasn't going to go that way. How did you feel when it did? Well... I was angry. I was more angry than I've ever been up until that point in my life. But once I composed myself, I instantly realised why she may have felt that way. I was her firstborn child. I was about to go to university and all of a sudden I was engaged. Not only was her child growing up in the blink of an eye, but to her, my dreams were suddenly in doubt. She tried telling me how I can't let my life slip away for love. 
and to still focus on my painting whilst I had the chance. I promised her, which, looking back now, was, was the wrong thing to do. But maybe she was right. Why didn't you consider that? Because if you take the life that Mum had into consideration, it's easy to see why she couldn't look at love the same way that I did. Just because you can justify her actions, that doesn't make them right or wrong. Of course not. But people are so much more complex than that. And just because she's our mum, and we expect a certain level of care, it doesn't mean that she'll always be able to adhere to it. We have to make our own judgments. I know, and... I don't want you to think that I'm being inconsiderate to you, or her, but what if it was a mistake? Well, then it's like I said, I'm old enough to take responsibility. But as of now, I'm yet to be proven otherwise, and I'm grateful for it. You should be. But what I'm trying to say is that Mum has put that same pressure that you have felt onto me. And not only did that moment make me doubt my, my dreams, but even my engagement, and even now, my marriage. I make out that I'm stronger for it. But I'm not. I just want you to see that we're not that different. And no matter what, you can only blame the way that you move forward on yourself. That sounds like more of a lesson for Mum. Maybe it is. That's a good one for all of us. I know. At the end of the day, people have their own issues. And we can't expect them to solve ours if they can't even solve their own. I know. And if being here worries you this much, then maybe you should come up with a backup plan. <laughs> a backup plan? Seriously? I don't think I've ever heard those words in our family. Mum would be furious with you. I mean it. Have something to fall back on. Did you have a backup plan? No. Then why should I? Because you seem like you need one but that goes against everything we as a family believe in. It's all or nothing. I didn't need a backup plan because I had love to fall back on. My wife was my backup plan. Surely that caused you even more conflict? No, it didn't. Because who I'm in love with can't be changed. You're lucky to have that. Luck doesn't even cut it. But we're all different. I've always been someone that knew exactly what I wanted. I wanted to be a painter, get married, and eventually have two children. But where did the drive to be a painter go? It's weird. Now that you ask, I have no idea. It just seems to have drifted away. You only graduated two years ago. I guess a part of it is being in a relationship. It's something that moves at a different speed. We needed money for the wedding. and We weren't like other families where the parents could chip in. But why the rush? We weren't rushing. It's just that at that point I cared more about my life with her than I did my career. There was no need to wait. I just can't see myself living a life ruled by love. No one can. Until they fall in love. And then everything changes. I find it so hard to understand your decisions. You shouldn't even be trying to. What I'm trying to tell you is that no matter who you are or what you believe in, your life is down to you. But that's easy for you to say. What's that supposed to mean? It's just that, even with everything you've just told me, 
You still seem to have had it so easy compared to others. Everything you've wanted or could have had has been almost handed to you. It's only seemed that way because I've worked hard for what I've got. To be honest, if I really think about it, your life is probably half the problem. Well, that's not fair. I know it's not, but I can't help but feel that way. And the older I get, the more I seem to... Seem to what? The more I seem to... Go on, spit it out. You seem to what? Despise you. Don't take this out on the people that care about you. I'm just so sick of you acting like you know me. Like you know what would help me. You have no idea. Then tell me. Everyone has issues, so stop acting like you're alone in this. I know everyone has issues. Well then what makes yours above everyone else's? I feel like it's getting to the point where you're just waiting for me to blurt it out so I've got more grief on my shoulders. But I won't do it. I'm not asking you to do anything. Good! Then stop acting like we're so different. I'm not. It's just seeing the life you have. The way that you are. It's like the perfect picture. It's not like that. I already told you that it isn't. Nothing is. You're delusional to think so. I am not delusional. Then why do you think it bothers you so much? Seeing us. When you know that we're not perfect. Because even with your problems, you still have more than most. Then I guess we should start being honest with each other more often. That would be a start. Go on then. You first. What do you hate about my life? Your happiness. That's disgusting. It hurts to see you with someone to rely on who isn't doing so because they have to. But instead of acting this way, you should be channeling that energy into finding that someone for yourself. I know what I should be doing, but that doesn't make it any easier. Well then what on earth am I meant to say to you? I don't know. But maybe if you just left me alone, then I'd be able to find myself without fitting in with what you think of me to be. Sure, I have an idea of who you are. But I'd be much happier, and so would you, if you told me who you are. Then give me more time. Your time isn't up. But the quicker you find peace, the easier this will all be. University is a hard place, and you'll only manage if you learn to manage yourself. The problems I have don't just relate to university. I know. But here, you're expected to become an adult. To take responsibility for your actions, not just blame the way you feel on everyone else. I'm not trying to. I hate that I feel this way. I know it's not easy. But with the right mindset, one day it might be. I don't suppose you have any water or anything in here? My mouth's a bit dry. No. Sorry. Um, Mum gave me money to do a food shop, so... Everything's still on the shelves. It's all right. I'll pick something up on my way to work. Introduction. 
sometime next week. The freshers? What? Surely you don't think freshers are on my mind? It's no big deal. You should go. It's easier to see the outcasts. They stick out. And let's face it, you'll be one of them. That's what I'm nervous about. And think about all the people that will be the same. I had a much harder time fitting in and finding my place. I never had the head start. I thought that you went to Freshers. No. I just told everyone that I did. Why did you do that? It was easier. Weren't you excited to go? No. If you have a conversation with any honest graduate, you'll soon realise that the experience isn't what it's made out to be. What if I literally just want to come here and study? <laughs> That's all anyone wants to do. But they get caught up in it all. I think the real reason people go as mad as they do in freshers is because it's easy to drink away the anxiety. Did you ever feel like that? That goes without saying. But the reason I'm encouraging you to go is because you'll make friends quicker by pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. I know it sounds bad, but use it as an opportunity to target people. You'll be able to see people that are uncomfortable, shy. Look for people that share the same qualities as you. I've never been a great judge of character, though. Yeah, but everyone is exaggerated in those first few weeks. They want to find you as much as you'll want to find them. They say at university you make friends for life. Is that true? Well, I guess that's somewhat true. But not all of them will be. I only left with one friend that I still speak to. But I know he's got my back. I hope that that's true for me. From my experience, it will be. George spotted me at some icebreaker event. It was obvious I was struggling, because I was standing alone, eating a slice of pizza lent up against a wall. <laughs> Whilst he didn't admit it at the time, I was his last option. He'd already been through everyone else before he got to me. Didn't he take you for your first ever coffee or something? Yeah. <laughs> he couldn't believe that I'd never had one before. Well, it doesn't help that hardly anyone in our family drinks hot drinks. Exactly. I didn't even know if I liked coffee. I still don't like coffee. Well, it's a good thing that I did. But that could have backfired. It's a cool story, to be fair. Yeah, it's all right. But that's the good thing about university. It's people from all walks of life that will all help you find your place. It's all just so hard to get my head around because, in some ways, University does in fact seem a place for introverts, but in others it doesn't, you know? And everyone I've spoken to only adds to the idea that it seems more like a place for extroverts. It's exactly why people are pushed out of their comfort zones. Introverts feel as if they're in an extrovert environment, and extroverts feel as if they're in an introvert environment. It's confusing. A part of me is excited to meet people here, you know, people who I can relate to, but also people who won't make me feel like an outcast or a failure. You're far from a failure. I failed at finding those people. Well, then, now is the best time to change change. You know, to be open, authentic. Do you really think that's possible? In some ways. But who am I to tell you what is or isn't possible? I'm just the same as everybody else. I know. But that doesn't stop you. It's just frustrating. I don't see why you're so eaten up about who I am. I'm just trying to help. That's all any of us have ever been trying to do.
Who else are you throwing into this? Mum, your friends, the rest of the family. Well, we've all seen it. You're the only one who isn't okay with it. You don't know what I'm okay with. You won't think about it without me even forcing you. You don't know what I'm thinking. Just cut the shit. Every minute you're contradicting yourself. At this point, doesn't it just seem easier to tell the truth? Forget it. I need to start thinking about leaving. We are no closer to the conversation than we've ever been. By coming here, I thought that we'd have a moment to be alone, and I was right, we did. But I didn't expect it to turn out like this. Then just leave! Like you said, we're getting no closer. I can't do this anymore. I've tried reasoning with you, but I'm sick of talking about things that are irrelevant and in places taking grief. I don't want to leave here today with all of this still in the air. Then you shouldn't have put it there in the first place. The sooner you're honest with yourself, the happier you'll be. You don't know what would help me. I'm not the enemy here. Then don't act like it. You know I love you. We all do. We just want you to see yourself how we see you. To love yourself the way we do. It's ten to three. I need to start thinking about leaving. What are you thinking? Do you have any idea? Actually, forget it. This has gone on long enough. You don't get to decide that. Why not? We're just going to repeat old conversation. This was none of your business in the first place. You're my brother. Well. You wouldn't treat your friend like this, would you? That's irrelevant. Would you? This is over. Answer me. No. Probably not. <laughs> Don't you care about me? You know that I do. Then why? When you knew how hard this move was going to be for me, do you have to keep making it harder? I didn't mean to. I asked to go to lunch. Not to unpack my bags or to start arguing with you. Look, I was out of line. I shouldn't have approached the subject like I did in the first place. I'm- Forget it! Good news? Huh? I asked if it was good news. No, um, it's nothing. Well, two seconds ago we were at each other's throats. Now you've suddenly calmed down. Like you said, we're done here. Who's Alex? Just a friend. And what's with all the kisses? Nothing. Well, back in my day, receiving kisses from someone meant that they liked you. He's not like that. Look, maybe I'm old fashioned. <laughs> Kisses usually mean something. Yeah, well, the times have changed. I don't think they've changed that much. We're only five years apart, remember? Yeah. Tell me about Alex, friend or not. I've never heard you mention him before. Well, there's, um, there's not much to say. OK. 
Okay then. I'll quiz you. Where does he live? Back home. Does he have a job? Is he studying? Yeah, he um, has a job. He works in a hotel, or at least as far as I know. What happened? I don't know. Look, I know things haven't quite gone to plan, but you can talk to me. We, um... We drifted, I guess. Both wanted different things. We haven't spoken in months. That's why I probably seem to change. In a good way. You seem glad to hear from him. Yeah. Of course. And what happened before this? He, um, he, um, he told me he was gay and I didn't know how to react. What did you do? I just brushed past it. I changed the subject. Did he ever bring it up again? No. He just, um, started messaging me less. And then, eventually, we stopped talking altogether. How did that make you feel? I don't know. I mean, I thought we were friends. I guess I just didn't see his intentions right away. Maybe you didn't want to. It's just that after seeing his name and messages after all this time... Stop there. Don't overthink it. He messaged you on a day he knew you needed it. That's what matters. Yeah. You're right, I guess. I just hate the thought of hiding. Not from me, but from him. Everybody puts up an act to somebody. Put it this way, I'm not the same to you as I am to my boss at work. No, but that might be nice. <laughs> well, you'd never be so lucky. And if the situation's good for anything, at least it's good practice for your career. <laughs> what? I tried. I know. Thanks. It's Mum. Hi, Mum. Yeah, no, everything's fine. Yeah, despite everything, he... Seems excited. Yeah, I know. I'll make sure he's all unpacked. We've started, we've just got a few more bits to do. How's work? Hey, good. I'll pop by this evening once I finish. Probably won't be until late. I know. I'll make sure he's settled before I head off. I'll tell him to call you later. No, don't worry, he'll call you. I'll see you later. Bye, Mum. Love you too. Why wouldn't you talk to her? Why did you tell her I was excited? Well, I didn't think you'd want me to tell her. Well, no, not really. Then you should be grateful. 
Maybe this is why we've never had a proper adult relationship. You need to stop trying to control everything. Well, I've had to try. Before you grew up, it was just me and mum, and you don't know what it's like to have that responsibility. Never have you had to face anything. Not telling mum wasn't for me. It was for you. Do you really want her to have more to worry about right now? What do you mean, more to worry about? I didn't mean it like that. But she has enough on her mind already. Well, it's nice to know you're so precious of her feelings, but are so happy to affect mine. We've been talking, haven't we? Hardly. I don't know what more you want from me. I'm only trying to help. All my life, I've been the one to look out for people. But who's there to look out for me? You only have to ask. Have you ever had to ask? When we were younger, I used to really look up to you. Your confidence as a kid was infectious. Now it just seems that all the decisions you make are ways to make your life a little easier. I'm sure you understand by now that life is a massive piece of shit. One day, when you've got people of your own, people who depend on you, you'll be the same. And you'll be doing everything you can to try and keep the peace and keep moving forward. Thinking back, I can recall times that you were like that, where I truly depended on you. But it's also easy to see how you became like you are now. <laughs> oh, really? Yes. Oh, really? Well, then go on, please. Enlighten me. It was in the midst of your filmmaking days. We're going that far back, are we? Yep. And if I remember correctly, we had just seen E.T. and it seemed to change your life. <laughs> the minute the credits started rolling, you picked up the old camcorder, you started shooting the shaky footage. And you soon had me in the starring role. <laughs> How do you remember all of this? I can hardly remember any of it. I don't know. You always used to really inspire me. It's weird, thinking of me wanting to be a filmmaker now. I don't even remember what that feels like. Yeah, but you wanted to be everything at one stage or another. <laughs> one minute filmmaker, then a ventriloquist, then a juggler. <laughs> See how lucky we were to be told we could be anything we wanted to be? Yeah, but I think we would have saved a year or so if Mum had just told you that your ventriloquism act was awful. Yeah, you're probably right. But I seem to remember myself being pretty good. That was just Mum's encouragement. Trust me, I remember how painful it was. Well, what about the rest? Do you remember if I was any good at juggling or filmmaking? To be honest, you weren't good at anything until you started painting. I guess that's somewhat of a compliment. Anyway, back to my story, because you were always quite a pushy brother when we were younger. I'd do everything you asked. I remember our first film. What was it called? Alien... Android? Yeah, that was it. A modern masterpiece. Yeah. <laughs> we were about halfway through the shoot. All the footage of me shooting the neighbours in the head with toy guns was signed off, but we didn't have an actual villain. Why were we shooting the neighbours before we even had a villain? <laughs> I don't know. I guess like most great directors, you must have just been working with what you had. Anyway. Do you remember, there was that kid who lived across the road from us. He used to watch us playing and filming from his bedroom window. That was creepy. Yeah, it really was. After a while, he uh, 
started coming down and photo bombing pivotal moments and crashing the shoot. Do you remember? He naturally became the villain of the film without you even casting him. When I used to ask you why you wouldn't just let him join in, you said it was because you liked it just being us. For years, we would make films, go down to the arcade and kick the machines until money fell out the bottom. I remember us going to the corner shop and trying to rent those horror films. Most of all, just causing havoc in our little town. How does any of this relate to what we just spoke about? I don't know. I thought it would, but I guess that it doesn't. There must be a reason as to why you started telling me this. It doesn't matter now. I know I'm selfish. And I know I've made a lot of mistakes and keep doing so. But I've always cared about you. And when Dad left, I was old enough to notice. And it really hurt me. I just wanted to make sure you still had someone in your life that would do all the things a dad would do with you. I never felt like I was missing out. And that means a lot. But I'm not convinced that's why you started telling me this story. Just say it how it is. It's just that You used to care so much about our relationship. And at one point, you were my best friend. <laughs> Growing up without dad made me really look up to you. You seem to have the world figured out. Or at least our small town. But all things change, I guess. And once you fell in love, you never spend time with me anymore. I mean, how long has it been since we've been alone together? Five years. I don't blame you. I mean, in a way it's fitting we're five years apart in age as it is. I just thought that as we got older, the age between us would seem insignificant. But it seemed to make us more out of sync. It's not that we're out of sync. We grew up. We don't have time to be playing in the streets anymore or making crappy films. We both got lives, responsibilities. I know, but ever since you fell in love, things weren't like they used to be anymore, were they? Of course not. We grew up. But I seem to remember us still hanging out. Sometimes the three of us, most weeks. But not because you wanted me to. Only because Mum asked you to include me. That's not true, you know that it isn't. How would you explain the times when you'd kick up a fuss when she'd ask? Or when you wouldn't talk to me the whole time we were out? It's not like that. What about the time you left me at the park to walk home all by myself? Why do you have to keep doing this? None of this happened the way that you're making it out. Why are you getting so angry? I'm not angry. I'm only trying to get my point across. You would always put all of your eggs into one basket. Leaving the rest of us and your career behind. I was 14. I was discovering myself. I just learned how to kiss and soon after how to have sex. You should be able to understand that by now. And do you really think that I'd want to be spending my weekends with my nine-year-old brother? I just wanted you to be honest with me. Not dragging me along because you had to. 
You didn't have any friends. I did what I thought was right. And you started growing up. I was still a child and I wanted to be with you. That's not my fault. You should have been straight with me. And Mum should have stopped pushing you to invite me. And this is what I mean. From day one, you've been doing what Mum says. Or lying when it suits you to make your life easier. But never once have you spoken to me about any of this. Or been understanding when I've struggled with making friends. And I don't want you to take any amount of blame. I just want you to understand how I feel right now. And let me feel that way. And let me not feel guilty about how my feelings might affect our family. You make me out to be such a monster. No, I don't. Just from the minute I arrived in here, the feeling has made me question a lot of things. It's brought up a lot of memories. I don't want you to feel like this was an attack. Because it wasn't. Well, I do feel like this was an attack. I didn't have to drop you off here today. We could have put you on the coach like other families. And look, I know I haven't been perfect. I know mum hasn't been perfect. And I know that you haven't been perfect. But that doesn't mean that we fuck up our memories and make them out to be something other than what they were. It's like you said. The older you get, the more you come to understand. But it didn't have to come to this. I didn't want it to. Don't tell Mum about, you know, let me tell her. How long will that take? Not long, I hope. You should call her. If you want closure on this part of your life, then call her! I'm sorry. Forget it. I don't know what came over me. Just tell her when you're ready. I will. Have you heard of the term painted from memory before? Some painters use it as a way of inverting the truth or an environment. It's where you paint solely from how you remember something rather than using a reference or a guide. Let me put it this way. When I leave, you could attempt to paint me, but it'd be pretty difficult, wouldn't it? I probably wouldn't look how I do now. Not with my painting talents. <laughs> but that's not the point. The point is that what you're doing and thinking about your past is relating it to your present. You're painting from memory. But your memories won't be the same now as they were then because you've changed. What time is it? Shouldn't you be going? Yeah. I made this for you. Make sure you hang it somewhere nice.
call me if you need anything. I mean it. I will. It's a big city out there. Just don't expect to fit in straight away. I guess this is it. Be honest with me. Were you scared? Of university or life? Of course.